Hey guys, girls, I'm James and welcome to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the Beeline F7 Mini Drone. Why do they call it a mini drone when really you think of a mini drone as something like this? Well, it's because mini means also means under 250 grams. And why is that important? Well, drones under 250 grams have never needed to be registered with the FAA, but soon all drones over 250 grams are going to have to have a remote beacon. And on some drones, that's just going to mean a firmware update. But on these budget drones, they don't have that capability of, of being able to update the firmware. So you're going to have to get a remote beacon and mount it on top. But this drone falls underneath that threshold. And that is pretty much standard across the world at 250 gram mark. So I don't think that's going to go up and down. This one has brushed motors. It's a GPS drone. So all the satellites are going to lock onto it. It's got autonomous flight features, uh, follow me, circle, waypoints, but it doesn't have obstacle avoidance. So if you're thinking of using those autonomous flight features, be really careful on a drone that doesn't have obstacle avoidance because it's going to go where you send it. It's this price point on Amazon right now. So right now you look, it is on sale and there's a, and there's a $50 discount. So if you're thinking about getting one of these for Christmas, I would jump on it. I don't know how long they're going to be given the $50 discount. So the camera does have a one axis gimbal. It does go up and down, but it doesn't have the three axis gimbal. So it's going to tilt in the horizon. This takes fantastic pictures, 4K pictures, 2.7K video, but you're probably looking at it and thinking, I've seen that drone before. Well, it, it does. <laughs> it is the same drone as another company and it's rebranded, but guys rebranded is just commerce. That's the way things work. You don't walk up to a guy in a GMC pickup and say, Hey man, you just, you know, you're just driving a Chevy pickup. You could have got it cheaper. Well, if you can rebrand it and sell it cheaper, then I'm happy, then I'm all for it. And this one's cheaper. It comes with extra props, two batteries, and guys, check out this really nice carrying case it comes with. At this price point, you wouldn't think that you would get something this nice. You know, for $100 more, you could get the Mini SE, but it only comes with one battery and no carrying case. But maybe that's more than you want to spend. So if you want to be at this price point, is this one at the top of the list? How does it fly? Let's go put her up in the air. I'll show you. I'll show you how good the camera works. Then we'll sit down. We'll go over the interface with the app, how to get the remote bound to it and the gyro set and all that. Then I'll come back for my final review. If you just want to see the final review to see if you want to buy it, it's stamped underneath. You can skip all that. But if you buy this, be sure to watch the instructions on it. I go over a lot of things that you probably wouldn't think of. So let's go put her up in the air. All right, the first time you ever take a drone off, don't just send it off. Let it hover for a while, make sure everything's working correctly. Make sure it's in mode two. In Europe, they use mode one, and I've bought drones before and they came in mode one, and I'm like, what is going on? The most important thing is know where return to home is. If you ever panic in a situation, just let go of the sticks if it's in GPS mode and it's gonna hover. If you ever lose sight of it or anything like that, just put it, hit your return to home button. So here I'm gonna do fly around. Um, on all these autonomous features, be sure you're higher than all the obstacles around you. It does not have obstacle avoidance and it's going to go wherever you send it. And here I point the camera down. As you can tell, it doesn't have a three axis gimbal. Uh, you could even do fly around and just do multiple pictures and that would even probably look better. I'm just showing you what the camera looks like uh, with the one axis gimbal. And next I'm going to do GPS follow. So it's going to follow the Wi-Fi of the device Alrighty. that you're using, not you. And being a Wi-Fi drone, it's not going to have great range, three to 400 meters. I know some of them say a mile, but I would never push a budget drone that far. Also, you could probably walk your dog or ride your bike really slowly. But again, be sure and watch the drone or have someone watching it for you because it will run into something if you walk Distance behind limited. an object like a tree or something like that. So this is a really good drone to learn how to use these autonomous flight features. Uh, they're a lot of fun to play around with and get used to them before you go out and spend thousands on a drone. The fact that you can be using these features on a drone that's a couple hundred dollars is really amazing. So now I'm going to do the waypoint missions. That's the most scariest thing to do when you're using a drone without obstacle avoidance. As you see here, I widen the black ring because in the beginning, it's going to have a very short area that it will fly in. And so I set the parameters to one, two, three, four, five. I send it off and I still kind of get nervous because it's going to go straight to that point number one. Uh, so be sure as soon as you touch it, it's going to go. One thing I like about this drone, if it's in a mission, just touch any button and it will stop. Some of them you got to hold back down on that mission button. And when you're in a panic mode, uh, that's not very comforting. 
Another thing to remember is when you hit return to home, it's not going to return to you. It's going to return to where it took off from. And it has a variance of maybe three to five feet. Usually they're pretty close. So take off in an open area. So when it's landing, it's not going to hit any obstacles that are close to where it took off from. The more I fly this drone, it really flies really good. I start getting more and more comfortable with it and you just start trusting it more. And here's some pictures I took. This is straight off the SD card. So these are 4K videos. It's 2.7K video, but these pictures are really, really good. I didn't edit these at all. That color saturation is straight out of the camera and it's spot on. And here's the video. So it's windy outside and it's gonna tilt the drone. But remember, this is a budget drone. For the price point that this drone is set at, you get a really nice bag, extra batteries, extra props, and there's just a lot less stress having the, this price point up in the air. I would also suggest the first time you try to use any of these autonomous flight features to have a, a visual observer, which is someone that can help you. Um, and I wouldn't even try these autonomous flight features until you've probably went through three or four batteries if you've not flown a drone before. Uh, it takes a little while to get used to the orientation, but you'll get the hang of it after a little while. I always say to start with a little be beginner mini drone. That's the easiest way to do it. Also in the beginning, I wouldn't even look at the camera or even use the camera's feature, or you could do something like this and almost hit yourself. It'd be really embarrassing to cut yourself with your own drone. So let's go inside and I'll sit down and go over the interface with the app, how to get everything set and how to fly it safely. I do want to show you one more thing. If it's going to land somewhere and you're really uncomfortable with it, you can actually go up to it and underneath it, just flip it over and that'll kill the props. You can also hand launch it if you're in an environment where it's not safe to take it off from the ground. All right, so let's head inside. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, guys, let's see what he weighs in at. He weighs in at 242 grams, so you do not have to register it with the FAA. And since it's under 250 grams, when you first pick it up, you may think it kind of feels like a toy. But that's the same feeling you get when you pick up a $1,000 DJI Mini Pro 3. So how much is 250 grams? Well, 250 grams is about the same weight as a big banana. So inside this really nice box, you're gonna get a fantastic uh, carrying case. You can put stuff in the side and then everything fits really nicely in here. When you put the remote in the bag, it's got this really nice cover that goes over it. Then the drone goes on top of it. And then your two batteries go over here and it comes with extra props and they are labeled A and B. So make sure if you do have to replace one of these that you that you get it on the right ones or you want the angle of attack will not be right. Comes with two really nice charging cables and two batteries. <laughs> and it's so nice that it doesn't have the big clunky chargers. You just push it right in on the side and these chargers also charge the remote because it doesn't take batteries. You just plug it in right here. The light will be red and then when it, when it gets done charging, this will turn green. So on the drone, your SD card goes right here. It does fold up. It's got really nice lights in the back. And you might be thinking, man, I wish I had a three axis gimbal. But guys, look how, I know it's only a one axis gimbal, so it goes up and down, so it doesn't tilt. So it's gonna get really good photos without having a multiple axis gimbal. The camera doesn't stay still. It moves with the horizon. But look how well this one is protected. I mean, as a beginner, you really want a drone that takes really good pictures and has a well-protected camera because if you take a drone and you break it and you break this gimbal off, it's pretty much toast. It costs more to repair this than what the drone is worth. So as a beginner, this is a really good drone. It's a great camera, good flight time, has an optical flow sensor on the bottom. So that helps it hold altitude, especially when it comes down and it's gonna land. The battery pulls out right here. Like I said, it comes with two of them. It takes quite a while to charge them. I think it's about a couple hours. Be sure if you ever crash it, make sure that these are extended all the way. I know sometimes it, it'll be like just a little bit off. It'll be just a little bit off and you don't notice it and it flies weird. So these do kind of pop back into place, which is really nice. So on the remote, you turn it on right here. On the top over here, this is where you take a photo and this is where you start a video. This moves the gimbal up and down. There is an antenna in the back. Your phone goes here. This is your takeoff button, but you got to unlock the motors. And then here is your, um, here's your return to home. And this is your cal compass calibration. I'll show you how to, what that does in a minute. The one thing I don't like about this remote is the speed switch is right here. So it's not labeled. So when you're flying it, it has two speeds. So it's speed one, you hear that little click and that's speed two. And also make sure it's not in beginner mode if it seems to be flying really slow. So I'm going to fly it with my phone, but I'm going to use my iPad to show you the app. 
So it doesn't come with the QR code uh, to find the remote, but all you do is you go to your app store, type in B-Wine Mini, and there's the B-Wine Mini. And just download the app. You can open it up. Turn on the drone, turn on the remote. One thing before I show you the app, this controller is not bound to the drone. So if I hit the takeoff button, nothing's going to work. You have to bind the controller to the drone. And how you do that is go up and down on the left hand side. And now it's bound and the lights will change. It's still not going to work on the app because it's a Wi-Fi drone. So what you have to do is go back to your settings, go to your Wi-Fi, see Bwine, hit that. Now the drone is connected to the Wi-Fi of the device you're using, not to the Wi-Fi of your home. So now when you go back to the app, hit control, go, it takes you through a pre-start checklist. GPS mode. <laughs> Even talks to you. So this is great. It, there's two ways to do this. Uh, it's gonna throw you into a compass calibration or you can push hold down on the compass calibration button. But what it's doing is telling you to spin it three times this way. You have to do this every time. And then you turn it three times this way. And I know this seems like a pain. But now you, flip, now you set it on a flat surface and you hit calibrate. And this calibrates the gyros on it. Make sure it's on a flat surface. Man, look how good this camera is. So it's probably best to make a pre-start checklist. So you have to bind the controller. You have to bind the controller to the drone by going up and down on this stick. Then you have to hook it up to your Wi-Fi. Then you have to calibrate your compass. Then you gotta set your gyros. And I know that seems like a lot of work, but you know how when you get in your car and you start to drive and your GPS says, oh no, you're going the wrong way. And you turn around and go the other direction because the GPS did not know what the front and the back of your car is. Well, the GPS needs to know what's the front and back of this drone and the top and the bottom. That's why you calibrate the compass. So when it takes off, it knows which direction it's gonna go. You don't wanna put a drone up in the air and then hopefully the GPS finds out which way the drone is going. This camera is really, really good. This thing takes fantastic pictures, especially at this price point. And again, so this, you can press this and it takes a picture and it'll save it to the gallery. And then this starts a video and you'll see over here, the timer, it'll start going. And it gives you your, your gigabytes left on your SD card, the battery on the drone, the battery on the chart, on the remote, and also go into the app. And you can see the, the photos that we took took these yesterday. These are in 1080p. When you pull the SD card out, it's gonna even look better than it does on the app. Also in the settings over here, if you look, it's in beginner mode. It's not gonna fly very far or very fast or almost do anything. So you have to take it out of beginner mode. Then you can set your flight distances here in meters or you can change it. Down here is where you touch your, your map over here, you can do takeoff, but do takeoff on, don't use the app for takeoff, use your controller. So here's your flight mode. So this is the GPS follow. So it's going to follow the remote, uh, not you. It's going <laughs> to, once it's connected to the GPS, the circle mode, which is my favorite thing to do, and it, it'll circle around you. You can change the settings on how far that is in it. And then waypoints, so you can set a mission. Without having obstacle avoidance, I really wouldn't use waypoints. You can do the circle mode, but just make sure there's no obstacles around you. And same thing with GPS follow. If it's following you and you turn in front of of a tree and it's following you it's just going to smash into the tree so just be real careful using these autonomous flight feet. so let's go back for our final review hey guys thanks so much for watching my review of the bwine f7 mini drone what i think about it man i think it's at the top of the list on its price point uh, for a little bit more you can get a lot more drone but for less you'd have to move down to a brushed motor that's not a gps drone having the gps as huge as a beginner because it holds its position in the wind um, it does have the autonomous flight features which DJI has never put on one of their mini drones that doesn't have obstacle avoidance because they know they'd get a bunch of them back crash. If you're going to use autonomous flight features, be really careful as I went over when I was given the instructions. The pictures are spot on at a 4K, comes with a top notch case to carry it around, multiple batteries, good flight time. I love the fact that the camera and gimbal are really protected on the sides. It's pretty easy to crash one of these drones without having obstacle avoidance. The optical flow sensor on the bottom works really good as you saw when it comes down and lands and helps it control better. Overall, it's a very easy drone to learn how to fly in, which is, which is real important before you go out and spend a fortune on a drone. 
So guys, like always, if you got something out of this, please like and subscribe. Leave comments underneath if you got it, what you like about it, or any questions you have about any drone, and I answer every single one of them. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.